Hello everyone, and welcome back to Age of Noob. Economy technologies are vital to your success in Age of Empires 4, so here's a quick rundown on when you should research each one. I'll do my best to make things more intuitive this time around to help newer players to not only quickly learn, but also retain this information so they can apply it to their games. Hence, I'll keep things short and sweet. Let's begin. The first technology we'll cover is Wheelbarrow. This technology affects all resources and makes it easier to move around your villagers and flee from enemy units, so it's a critical one to research. Ensure that you pick up Wheelbarrow around the time you're aging up to the Feudal Age, so it could be slightly before, during, or right after. You could opt delaying Wheelbarrow in rare circumstances where you're executing a hyper-aggressive rush or all-in, but the majority of you should stick to the aforementioned timing. Survival techniques only improves deer and boar gather rates and ideally needs to be researched before you go out to hunt. You should only research this if you can't secure one full deer camp and one boar, or two deer camps and two boars, as it's not worth it to just research it for one camp or one boar. The only exceptions to this rule are the Delhi Sultanate as they can pick it up for free, or the French and Jean d'Arc due to their discount, so you can research survival techniques with those civilizations even if you're only hunting a single camp. Moving on, forestry is somewhat of a trap for beginners as it looks like a cheap no-brainer technology that you can research immediately. Not quite. It only has a roughly 3% impact on wood gather rate and should be researched after you get your first lumber camp upgrade in the feudal age and not earlier. Okay, with those three standalone technologies out of the way, let's now take a look at the first set of feudal age upgrades. Horticulture from the mill, double broadaxe from the lumber camp, and specialized pick from the mining camp should be researched when you have roughly 10 to 15 villagers on that resource. Depending on your civilization and build order you're following, this could be any combination of food, wood, and gold, but as long as you have more than 10 villagers actively gathering from a given resource, it's your cue that the time has come to pick up its first eco upgrade. Moving on to the Castle Age, we can follow a similar pattern here. Fertilization from the mill, lumber preservation from the lumber camp, and acid distillation from the mining camp should be researched when you have 20 to 25 villagers on the resource and not before. Having that many villagers on food and wood is rather common in the Castle Age, but you can still have, say, 15 villagers on gold and 7 on stone, so again, that's when you know it's a good time to research the Castle Age upgrades for your respective resources. That said, the Imperial Age upgrades break this pattern, especially since the latest changes, so pay close attention. Precision crossbreeding has always been an easy upgrade to recommend since the beginning as farms do not run out of food and decrease in gather efficiency. Hence, be sure to research it when you have around 30 to 35 farmers. If you have boomed up to a very safe farm economy already and have no trouble defending, then you can research it even sooner. Crosscut Saw just got a carry capacity buff in the latest update, and based on my testing, it provided an effective buff of around 1-2% depending on how inefficient your wood lines are. Nothing massive, but still noticeable. So if you have more than 30 lumberjacks and the map still has a healthy amount of trees to chop, then you should research Crosscut Saw. If you have fewer lumberjacks and very small wood lines are left on the map, then you should skip it. However, on maps with abundant wood like Hideout or Black Forest, it still remains an easy recommendation to research, as wood doesn't run out easily and games typically go long enough for it to be worth it. And finally, cupellation used to be easily the worst technology in the game as it was fundamentally flawed. I personally called it an abomination on my channel on three separate occasions despite all the buffs that it got. And that's because gold and stone would run out on the majority of the maps before you could even pay back your original investment. It should not have existed in the game in that state. Thankfully, cupellation was finally reworked and is now very different compared to the rest. Instead of increasing gather rates, which rendered it useless in the late game, it now increases gold drop-off by 15%. The way it works is simple. A villager with wheelbarrow would collect 15 gold before depositing that same 15 gold to a drop-off point. A villager with cupellation, on the other hand, will collect that same 15 gold, carry 15 gold, but deposit 17.25 gold instead. And just FYI, the fractional golds are rounded down until they add up to 1 gold every 4th deposit. Hence, the payback calculation for this is rather simple. If we take the technology's total cost of 750 resources at face value, then we need to have at least 5000 gold left to mine on the map to break even on our investment. That said, the wood cost is not really that relevant in the late game, so if you only consider recouping the 500 gold investment instead, then we need to have at least 3333 gold left on the map to mine. With that in mind, let's keep things simple. 
you should research cupellation as soon as you research acid distillation in the castle age, because if you followed my rule of thumb, this means that you will have enough villagers on gold to justify the investment and maximize your gains from this technology. Again, this only holds true if there is at least, say, more than 4000 gold left on the map. This shouldn't be an issue on most maps as soon as you hit your normal imperial age timings, so I'll be damned, but cupellation just became a rather easy recommendation to research overnight. Okay, that was a lot of information that we packed in such a short time, so let's summarize what we've learned so far. In most scenarios, you should research wheelbarrow around the time you're aging up to the feudal age, survival techniques before hunting and if you can't secure more than a deer camp or boar, forestry after double broadaxe, feudal age upgrades of horticulture, double broadaxe and specialized pick when you have more than 10 villagers on their respective resource, castle age upgrades of fertilization, lumber preservation and acid distillation when you have more than 20 villagers on their respective resource, and the imperial age upgrades of precision crossbreeding when you have more than 30 farmers, Proscott saw when you have more than 30 lumberjacks and still have a healthy amount of wood left on the map, and cupellation right after acid distillation, assuming there is still more than 4000 gold left on the map to mine, which should usually be the case. That wraps up everything you need to know about Ecotech timings in Age of Empires 4, so I hope you folks found this useful. And before I end the video, I'd like to share a few things. First, even though I uploaded two videos recently, I'm not really back. I didn't want the moving on video to be recommended to the new viewers of the channel because that's what I realized YouTube has been doing instead of recommending some of the other useful videos that I've made. Hence, I figured that if I uploaded a few videos after, it would signal to my viewer base, especially to the brand new subscribers, that Age of Noob isn't abandoned. And many viewers didn't come to the part of the video where I explained that I'm still around and will upload here and there. Second, I just shared my initial thoughts in Age of Empires Mobile on my last upload and explained that it's not really our cup of tea as franchise veterans. If you're interested in my full breakdown as to why or would like to see some exclusive footage that was not shared in the New Year New Age event, then be sure to check it out in the link in the description. And third, I'm almost done with my return video to Game Noob, in which I'll cover the downfall of Payday 3. Game Noob will be the main channel that I will be pivoting towards moving on, so if you're still interested in my game reviews and commentaries, then I'll be happy to see you folks over there. And as a final note, please do leave a comment down below on topics that you'd like me to cover in Age of Empires 4, and ideally something that is not too niche and would be useful to the beginners of the game. I may consider making them sometime in the future, just like I did with this suggestion from Reddit. As always, thank you all for watching and stopping by once more. We're already two months into 2024, and I do hope that you all had a great start to the year. Take care everyone, and I will see you all again in the next one, whenever that may be.